In this video, I'll be going over how to develop the drainage area feature definition list. Just as I did with the conduits, I recommend first creating a list outside of open roads prior to creating the features. This is going to help you see all the features in a list form to check for completeness. It's also going to be helpful in identifying what levels, element templates, and symbologies you'll need to create. It's going to help build that folder structure, and you can also use this for documentation purposes or maybe have it filled out or checked by the engineers. So again, this list is going to be separated out into a feature definition section, symbology section, and element templates. And I'll start with the feature definitions. So here I'm starting by developing the list of features that I'll want to create. This list will vary depending on the agency, but you'll want to check your design standards or your drainage manual to see what runoff coefficients list you use for the rational method. So here I have an example. This list could vary slightly, but I'll be using this list to develop a feature list. So here I've taken a list and I've developed a feature list for all of the catchments. And then you're going to want to also have those available for land uses. So you're going to have a repeat of all of those features as land use feature definitions. Additionally, you're going to want to have at least one feature definition that you're going to be using with land uses. So this is for when you're placing a catchment that is going to use the land uses that you've placed. Additionally, you might consider adding additional catchment feature definitions for different methods that you might use, like the NRCS curve number method. However, you don't necessarily need to create separate feature definitions for this purpose. So back inside of this example file where I was showing catchments and the land use areas, remember I have a catchment that's been placed using land uses. So it's looking at these two land uses and it's coming up with a weighted C value. Well, if I go back to this catchment, if I change it from the rational method to a different method, I'll use the a unit hydrograph as an example, it's still going to be looking at the land cover areas. And then it will create a composite curve number. So I don't necessarily need to have a separate feature definition for this. It might be better to have a workflow just where the user changes the setting when they're ready to use this new method. They would need to go into the land uses, however. We already have it set to look at a catalog, and you could already have this catalog populated. Although it is pretty easy to go in and just import from a library and choose the land use that you would want for that particular one. Um, so right now this is for asphalt, so I might go down to the impervious areas and choose a paved. So now I could choose the soil group, and that would give me the curve number. Then I would follow the same steps over here for the pasture. Right now, if I go back to the catchment and then compute the hydrology for that catchment, going to see a composite curve number be calculated off of those two land uses. Therefore, I'm not going to include those additional feature definitions in my list. In the remaining feature definitions I'll have, I'm going to have at least one for pond. If you have different types of ponds that you use, you might consider adding additional feature definitions for those. And then I also have LIDs, which are low impact developments that are only used if you are using civil storm. 